Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about the subject of surveillance. I do talk about it a lot on this channel and this video is going to be no different but there is actually a couple of differences. First and foremost I am talking about a camera that may or may not support network attached storage. That's something in the next video I'm going to find out. So if you're watching this video to find out if this device is supported by a network attached storage device, this may not be the video for you. Have a look on have a look on the other side of the screen where YouTube recommends other videos and hopefully part two of this video where we do our full software test of this device will show it. There's lots of indications that the brand new RLC 511 from Reolink will be supported on QNAP and Synology NAS platforms. It is on VIF supported, but yet on their own official website, they do state that this device is only supported by their own NVR systems, that it will only work with their NVR systems. But more and more, we do hear reports and reviews that suggest that this device, along with a number of their solutions, are supported by NAS. So if that's what you came to this video for and have used a minute of your time already, this isn't the video for you. It's the next one. But for the rest of you... <clears throat> Welcome to our review of the Reolink RLC 511. It is a bullet camera designed for outdoors. It's PoE, it's waterproof, it's got a bunch of features built into it, and like a lot of the Reolink cameras I'll talk about here on the channel, it is a device that personally I'm looking forward to getting my hands on and testing out. Why? Because there are so many brands of camera. Have you noticed, maybe this is the first time you're buying an IP camera for your home or you're buying it for business and you've got a certain budget and you've realized these things are really expensive. So you start playing around with the filters and you start relisting all the cameras that are there on screen and slowly but surely you realize that there are some cameras in terms of lower down the spectrum in terms of cost that seemingly seem perfect but you're just not sure and Reolink is one of those brands that started amongst that paddock of that lower unknown brand and managed to claw its way above the others I'm talk talking also about companies like Anker com companies like Hikvision, Edimax, those sort of ones these are ones that there used to be and still is really hundreds of know nothing camera brands and then from that some quality ones came out of it and Reolink's one of them so enough of an enormous plug there for Reolink it's only because I've done a bunch of stuff and they've got a bunch of stuff there in the background. Let's talk about this camera. Now, what makes this camera stand out? Well, a couple of key features for me personally. It is one, the fact that it is optical zoom. You would not believe how rare it is to get an optical zoom POE outdoor camera for less than a hundred quid. And this is a hundred quid um, um, optical zoom poe outdoor camera those are things that you don't find generally on the same spec sheet unless the price tag arrives in three figures why because optical zoom has a certain number of things about it that although desirable are counterintuitive to budget cameras you need a better c um, um cos uh, manager inside the camera to be able to do that plus poe cameras have a certain amount of draw to them and optical cameras have a lot more motors and bits and bobs inside um, generally people have managed to find budget ways around that with ai supported cameras that don't have optical zoom but do have kind of rudimentary ai support inside them that's one leverage against it but ultimately in terms of live active tracking an optical zoom is ideal. Now, this camera weighs apparently around 750 grams, so it is the better part of a kilo, so make sure it is going to be somewhere where with a good, decent bit of wall support behind it, but for 100 quid, it should be metal all the way around. If we have a look inside, actually, before we do that, let's have a look at that retail box there. Again, slight change from rear link there. It's actually quite an appealing box. This is a camera that's more likely to be purchased at retail, as we can see there, lots of information about it, lots of information about the warranty. My camera light is going nuts there. This device supports two years of manufacturer's warranty as well. And the device is available right now pretty much anywhere in the world, UK, US, uh, actually the bulk of Europe, the bulk of the world. Um, if we have a look inside, we'll find out what we get for our money. Later on, we will talk a little bit more about the software and the attributes of this camera. We have got our little accessories pack, and if we open this bad boy up, we can see what we get with our camera. We have our quick start installation guide of our PoE camera. And again, for those that aren't aware, PoE is power over ethernet. And what that means to the layman is it's a camera that is powered by a network switch. Now, the majority of you, when you're running cameras in your home, are gonna run two kinds of camera. 
One, you're going to run a camera that is connected to a mains outlet and is either wire connected or wireless to um, your internet connection around your home, your network. The rest of you may be going for an outdoor camera. And that's a camera that's going to be in the rain, it's going to be in the wind, and ultimately it's going to be very hard to supply mains power to it. And that's where PoE cameras come in because LAN cables can transmit more power than you would think. And the majority of Cat6e e cables, for example, for example, some of these can arrive in 20, and 20 or 30 meters before there's any kind of drag factor to the power support. Now, this device support uh, runs on just 10 watts of power with most PoE switches like the ones we've talked about in the past, arriving with 30, 60, 85, 100, 120 watt and more PoE. So you can have a lot of this kind of camera in your network environment with the added benefit that rather than trying to have it at a mains power outlet, you can get a LAN cable that is 20 30 meters long and it will still supply power to the camera as well as get the footage from that camera in real time so there's a one meter cable included with the device which is a bit stingy if you ask me i would have thought it was a little bit longer than that when you get the powered cameras they do at least arrive with a three or five meter usb power cable so i'm kind of surprised at just the one meter um inside we've got our wall mounting sticker there for attaching the device on the wall We've got information to the certificate of conformity, which again is quite UK specific, but I'm sure they have equivalents in the world. We have our sticker that you put in your window that says, uh, this has a camera there, which this is quite a big camera, so if they haven't seen that, I don't know what chance this is gonna be. And more installation, uh, installation instructions in different languages. Now, this device is generally set up with a mobile phone application for iOS and Android quite easily. And of course, I will be doing a software overview uh, video for this camera, but I will definitely be testing it out in the NAS environment. So once again, that question mark lingers above us. If we have a look inside, we have the cover there for the LAN cable, because it is an outdoor camera. And even though it is um, IP66 covered, so that's waterproof to an exceptional degree, as well as dustproof and several degrees of weatherproof, you will need to make sure that the LAN connection between the cable that this comes arrive attached with and the cable you're filtering into your network switch has this cover to make sure it remains dust and waterproof. You've also got fixings, the screws and raw plugs for attaching the camera to your wall, but bear in mind, once again, 750 grams, this is not a light camera. If we remove some of the foam there, we can get to the camera itself, which is surprisingly small. Most of the pictures that I saw of this camera when researching the script for this video did seem to indicate that this camera was going to be quite large. But take a look at that box that we've been waving about. That's how big the camera is. It's a great deal smaller than the retail box. That's all the accessories we got. And we can take a good look. But it is a compact weight of a camera. That, to me, is a pretty good camera there. I'm quite a big fan of that. Lots of LEDs around the front. There's 24 individual LEDs for that night vision. And again, that supports up to 100 feet or 30 meters of night vision coverage. And although it doesn't arrive with pan, tilt, zoom, it does have manual kind of motion there that you can put the camera in the right position. But what I will say is if you want a camera that's gonna be automated doing that, this is not the one for you. You want to look at some of the dome cameras, um, some of the RLC 23s, that sort of thing, that have got that nice built-in track motion. Or indoor cameras like the C2 Pro and the C1 and stuff like that, you will get some control there too. Now, the camera is metal in design. That hurt my hand. And it's pretty well constructed. You can see where the weight is, certainly. Um, on the rear there, I don't know how well you can make that out on the camera. Uh, just behind the mountain there, we have got that area there where we can install an SD card. Now, if you're not going to utilize an MVR system or a NAS, then you can take advantage of a 64 gig memory card, which is all right, I guess. 64 gigs, that's actually quite a lot of space. But once you have this camera recording 24 seven and not just based on alerts, you are going to fill up that card quick. So you're going to have to utilize a lot of the recycling um, support um, built into the software, as well as if it is connected to an MVR system that will allow you to keep um, recordings for a certain number of days and then record over them gradually over time to effectively have infinite recording space, but really it only retains recordings for a small length of time. Talking about that 64 opt uh, six, uh, sorry, four times 
optical zoom, we will talk about the fact that this camera doesn't just have the optical zoom built into that rather nice lens right there. It also arrives with digital zoom built in with software too. You can also enable zonal uh, notifications and tracking where you can select a certain area of the recorded um, surface and then go, I only want to know about alerts in this box here. And we will go into more details during our software overview from Reolink very, very soon. The recordings are in H.264, which might not be great for some of you. It's a much more raw um, and less compressed codec than that of H.265, something we're finding more and more with this uh, generation of camera. And if you do want a camera that supports H.264 and 265, you will have to spend a little bit more. It's not wireless. So if you do want a wireless version of this, there is one out there. It's exactly the same part ID, RLC511. They've just stuck a W on the end. Um, but Given that this is meant to be a POE camera, wireless is never really going to be on the table. Now, I've talked about this in other videos, but I'd like to talk about how this connects. As you can see here, we have three separate cables. Now, if we go for the main one, we have this one here. Now, that is our LAN connection. This is what we connect our LAN cable into to supply power in as well as recordings out. If you're using an SD card inside, the recordings are kept inside the camera, which is less than ideal if someone steals your camera, but thanks to its support of third-party cloud um, storage devices and um, NVR support, it means that all the recordings don't have to live just inside the camera. There's lots of ways in which you can get those recordings being live recorded, oh sorry, live written to an alternative source. Next to that, we have this cable here, and this is for a PoE injector. So if you want to utilize this, but not take advantage of a power over ethernet switch, you can buy a separate mains power adapter that will supply power to this camera, and then you can attach just a standard network cat cable into that, ca uh, that connection. And finally, you have got our reset button here. Now, I do query on some of these cameras why we need that reset button there when we happily have the screw hole SD card slot that we talked about earlier on, you could so easily put a reset button in there. It's so easy, I've seen several other brands do it. So I'm not entirely certain why they would enable it on there. That seems like it's a bit of an oversight there, particularly because you could just press and hold it and try to instigate a reset of the camera, something you don't really want people to do, but I know you can also cover that up and hold it within the bag of secured connections. Now, other than that, in terms of hardware, it's a pretty decent camera. I mean, again, the weight is there, so you will have to bear that in mind when you attach it for the very first time. And there's that slight ambiguity right now at the time of recording with regards to its support on NAS platforms, although I'm pretty confident we are gonna be able to utilize this in a NAS environment. But let's see when that comes around. For me personally, if you are gonna take advantage of the software and you planned to use Reolink's own software, or indeed any of, if you've never used it before, any proprietary software from the camera brand that you buy, this is going to be a good camera for you. Because once again, 100 quid for a POE IP66 optical zoom camera for outdoors that's metal in design, night vision, 24 LEDs. There's a lot you're getting for your money there. But the real cherry on the cake is going to be if this is supported on a NAS. And we're going to find that out very soon. Otherwise, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Click like if you have found it useful. Click subscribe if you want to stay tuned for the second part of this video. And finally, I will see you next time.